Take a look at this absolute horror unfolding in Myanmar right now. Rohingya children beheaded and burned alive as refugees continue to flood into Bangladesh to escape violence. Rohingya children have been beheaded and civilians burned alive according to witness testimony and claims that Burma's military and paramilitary forces are committing genocide or a pogrom against the Muslim minority in the country's western Rakhine state. Around 60,000 refugees are believed to have fled over the country's western border into Bangladesh in just a week following a clampdown on Rohingya militants. Civilians who escaped gave horrific accounts of violence and destruction by Burmese soldiers and other armed groups. A man named Abdul Rahman, 41, said he had survived a five-hour attack on Chutpian village. He told Fortify Rights, a charity working in the area, that a group of Rohingya men had been rounded up and detained in a bamboo hut, which was then set on fire. My brother was killed. Burmese soldiers burned him uh, with the group. We found my, my other family members in the fields. They had marks on their bodies from bullets and some had cuts. My two nephews, their heads were cut off. One was six years old and the other was nine years old. My sister-in-law was shot with a gun. Wow. Um, that's unbelievable. And the leader of Myanmar is a Nobel Prize winner. Come on, man. I mean, what else do you call this but a genocide? I don't know what else to call it. I mean, that is exactly what it is. Um, you have to have the UN put pressure on Myanmar. I mean, again, you want to talk about an instance where you should immediately cut off all trade with them? Cut off trade with them. Um, basically do, effectively, a BDS-style system but get international cooperation and force their hand to st stop committing a genocide, maybe. And this is an instance where even if the UN were to get involved and have people with guns just defend the, the Rohingya, set up a perimeter and defend them, you know, that would be preferable. I doubt that the soldiers in Myanmar are going to fire on uh, UN peacekeepers. Um... Now, that's not a perfect solution, but what other solution is there? What's funny is the people who are hawks in the U.S., the neocons, nobody's bringing this up, right? Nobody says, oh, we need unilateral U.S. military action. Unilateral U.S. military action to prevent the genocide. Nobody's bringing that up. Weird, it's almost like that's only brought up when a country is 100% an enemy of ours. But if we're, you know, if we have a neutral relationship with them, or if we have a good relationship with them, them, oh, we'll turn a blind eye as they commit atrocities left and right. Well, that's exactly what's happening. So any question you had remaining in your mind, which would be amazing if you had any at this late date, as to whether or not the U.S. cares about human rights and altruism and justice, please, I present it here. I rest my case. This is one story. Genocide going on. Nobody, none of the neocons are like, well, we need to do military action right now to stop it. None of them say that. None. Zero. Now, again, I'm not saying we should do that. I'm not saying we should militarily and unilaterally do, unilaterally do anything. I'm saying uh, immediate economic uh, sanctions to crack down and force Myanmar's hand to do something to stop this. Um, and then perhaps you have an international response See, that's, I don't like unilateral U.S. military force, but if you're talking about the world collectively, the United Nations collectively uh, preventing some sort of genocide, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Even if it's just protection. The peacekeepers there to stop any further atrocities from happening. 100% fine with that. And fine with that not just in this instance, fine with that in other instances too, where it's clear that there's some sort of a genocide going on. Remember when it was the ISIS and the Yazidis? And the Yazidis were on a mountaintop with no food, surrounded by ISIS, and they were going to fucking slaughter them? Yeah, if you had, not unilateral, but an international gathering uh, to protect the people, totally fine in that situation too. So, uh, my standard has always been unilateral is just for self-defense. Hey, there's an imminent uh, threat of attack against us, self-defense. But to stop a genocide, yes, you could have the, in the international community come together to do something to stop that. I've never seen a clear case of it here, but uh, there seems to be very little outrage uh, over this.